we've got slower long-term nitros, uh, oral tablets, and transdermal patches. Um, and of course we got IV nitro. If you uh, if you're putting on or taking off a nitro patch, wear gloves because you'll get a massive egg if you touch it. So, um, so nitrates they cause vasodilation. They just open up, relax the coronary arteries. <coughs> they also relax all the other arteries in your body. So what's going to happen when all of a sudden you've got a normal blood volume, but then the space that that normal blood volume occupies? opens wide up and doubles. Blood pressure going to bottom out. Right? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So like you've got a normal amount of blood, like in that cup, you've got a normal amount of volume, but all of a sudden you put it in a much bigger cup, it's going to be, it's going to act like you have a low volume. And so for blood pressure, it's going to bottom you out. So the number one thing with given high doses of nitrates, like a sublingual nitro, is checking your blood pressure before and after. Um, and make sure that you don't give number two and number three until you've checked the blood pressure. Same too with your patient teaching. Make sure they know they need to be sitting down because one sublingual nitro is a big enough dose to knock about anybody out. Um, they'll just pass out because of no blood pressure. So I've treated, I've had a number of head injury, head injured patients on unit one. Um, and the head injury came because they were having chest pain they took a nitro standing up in the living room and cracked their head on the coffee table. I can think of three patients with the coffee head, coffee table head injury. <laughs> so, and their heart, it turned out to be fine, um, but they didn't sit down and take the nitro. So, they had to stay the whole time. Um, so, we got that. If, you're, if you do have a spasm, spasming artery, um, nitrates can help relieve that, although calcium channel blockers are better. Uh, so... Can, can you address how fast each of these nitro applications uh, go to work, like if I'm sublingual? Pretty much immediate. Okay, if I'm taking a PO. Um, it depends on what kind we're giving. There's okay. a long-acting PO and a short-acting PO. Okay. Um, and I'll talk about it down the road a little bit here, but uh, with oral, the large first pass effect, if you take a pill, the first place, when you take some orally, the first place it goes is your liver, right? And your liver metabolizes a good chunk of that dose. So swallowing a sublingual nitro, it doesn't, won't affect you much. Okay. Um, so that's why you have to hold it under the tongue and it's absorbed straight into the bloodstream, just like red man chew or something get the nicotine straight into the bloodstream. Um, so, as soon as you feel that tingling under your tongue, it's being absorbed, so it's almost instantaneous. Um, uh, the, the IV is instantaneous too. Um, the top, the patches, you know, it takes a while to absorb. It. <laughs> Usually we put those on for 12 to 18 hours. Um, so low dose, long term. Um, we can use nitrates, IV, just to control blood pressure if we want to. Um, there's other drugs that do that too. But. So here we got ice by dinitrate, which is isobil. We can give that as a long acting. Take it in the morning and it pretty much acts all the way till nine o'clock at night. And then while they're sleeping, that's their nitrate-free interval, so they they go without nitrates, so they don't develop a tolerance for it. The mononitrate is quick acting, which you can take, um, like if you know you're going to have do some activity, you can take a, a shorter acting pill to prevent exercise-induced angina before you go to cardiac rehab or something. Um, side effects, headache. If you're on long-term nitrates, you're taking the Imdur or something like that, the headache's going to go away after three or four days, you'll stop having the headache. So that's nice to know. But if you are having an acute MI and you've never had nitrates before, you're going to have a massive headache. You know, we 
start your IV nitro or when you get the sublingual nitro. So you're going to have hypotension, especially postural hypotension, hypotension. So when they stand up, they're going to pass out. So most of our MI patients, we keep them in bed, partly because of the nitrates we're giving. I would think that also getting that headache if it's that mass, that's also going to increase the anxiety, though, isn't it? It would for me. I hate headaches. Yeah. But <coughs> the, the anxiety caused by the headache is diminished by the anxiety caused by the fact you're having a massive heart attack and about to die. So <laughs> yeah. usually the patients can tolerate the headache. We give them, we try to, you know, give them morphine or I, you know, Tylenol or whatever. But I. I give them Tylenol and a cup of coffee, and that seems to help. The caffeine actually is a vapor constrictor. Um, doesn't seem to have much coronary artery vapor constriction type. So, but on the other hand, a lot of times, if you're on a nitro drip or getting sublingual nitro, we make you NPO pretty much immediately because we're going to have to do an intervention soon, like a heart cath or bypass surgery. So, so. That makes it a little more complicated. Huh? So we talked about beta blockers uh, last week, but these, you know, if, if stress and adrenaline is hitting your heart, it's going to shoot up the heart rate. It's going to shoot up the oxygen demand, right? So if we can block adrenaline from speeding up the heart, uh, we can release angina. So that's what that's how beta blockers work for angina. Um, decreased myocardial contractility. The heart doesn't contract as hard, and so it doesn't need as much oxygen. You remember digoxin we talked about last week? What's it do to contractility? Slows and strengthens. So contractility is going up, right? Because it's Contractility is how strongly it's contracting. So DIG will actually can increase oxygen demand by making the heart actually pump harder. But it also slows it down, so sometimes that can balance it out. But, but anyway, a beta blocker is a negative inotrope. DIG is a positive inotrope. DIG makes it contract more strongly. A beta blocker and a calcium channel blocker both make it contract less strongly. So if you come in with a blood pressure of 60 over 20, are we going to give you nitrates? No. Even if you're having crushing chest pain, no nitrates. Um, good way to lose your license, just FYI, <laughs> if you give a nitrate to a patient like that. Um, are we going to give you a beta blocker? Crushing chest pain, heart rate, sick, uh, blood pressure 60 over 20. It's going to slow. It's going to decrease contractility, and what you need is more contractility. You need your heart to pump harder. Um, so, so angina for beta blockers, angina, blood pressure. Uh, we can use beta blockers just for blood pressure. So if you come in just with a real high blood pressure, with not having a heart attack or anything else, we can use beta blockers. Cardioprotective effects especially after MI. That's probably the most important thing to know for beta blocker because 89% of your patients, your older patients, are going to be on a beta blocker for this reason. And you need to know that. Anybody that's ever had an MI needs to be on a beta blocker for the rest of their life and an ACE inhibitor for the rest of their life. And that's the reason. Cardio protection. You live longer. That's what the studies show. They're, they're actually, of all the amazing things that we have discovered in modern medicine, two of the big miracles are beta blockers and ACE inhibitors because they extend your lifespan with, with an acute MI, if you've had a heart attack. So, um, some types of migraine headaches respond to beta blockers. <coughs> Just FYI. So if you have a young patient, no heart history, no blood pressure history, but is on a beta blocker, it might be migraines. Um, side effects of beta blocker, slow heart rate, slow, uh, low blood pressure. Kind of messes around with the glucose, blood sugar. 
Um, beta blockers make sure mental depression, dizziness, fatigue are included in your patient teaching. Um, this, this is going to come in handy for your family members. Even if you drop out of nursing school and never learn another thing, knowing that beta blockers cause dizziness, fatigue, depression, and impotence also is worth knowing, right? You just you made, made it this far in the program just to know this. It's worth knowing. Because, what? So after you flunk out, I hope you have this written down because you still need to know. 